Hi friends from YouTube, it's Robson Hayashida here. Today we are going to talk about the difference between RSI and uh, Williams percent range and how to combine them uh, in order to avoid false signals. So uh, let's start by deleting this and this. Okay, so here we have USD JPY uh, US dollar, Japanese yen on the hourly chart, 1H means one hour, and this is a live chart, okay, it's happening right now, and once again, I don't edit this video, uh, the explanation goes according to what we see on the screen, and uh, let's add, first of all, let's add the WVR, Williams percent range, and you can find it here, okay, so let's type it. The one I'm going to use today is this one. It's called Williams. And then you have the symbol percent and an R, which means range. Okay. So let's double click on it. Okay. There we go. All right. So according to this theory, and I'm not going to change the default values. So Williams percent range has the default value of uh, 14 here, okay? So it's 14 period and it has two bands, the upper band and the lower band. So it goes from minus 20 to minus 80, okay? And according to the theory, when it reaches minus 20, the price will go down. When it touches the minus 80, the price will bounce back and go up again, okay? So this is the theory. All right, so uh, as you can see here, okay, it has touched it here once, and according to the theory, the price will go down, you can see. The price, well, the price didn't go down much, it bounced back, went up again, okay? So I would call this false signal, okay? So let's write it here, whoops. Okay, so I would say this false signal, okay, happens here. Then it says here it touches again, okay. So here it touched the minus 20 band here, okay. So this says the price will go down, but wrong again, okay. Wrong again because the price went up, okay. And then uh, let's see. Okay, it touches here, right? And according to the theory, from here the price will go up, okay? So, but if you see here, the price didn't go up, it went down, okay? According to the theory, when it touches the lower band, the minus 80 band, the price should bounce back and go up again, okay? But it hasn't, so this is another false signal, okay? Then touch us here again, okay? And this is also another false signal, okay? Then touch us here and here, okay? Well, when it touches here, I wouldn't say it's a false, well, it bounced, it went down a little bit, <laughs> okay? So this, this, this whole area, okay, is not really like helping as much, okay? Then if you go here, if you go here, it touches here, okay? So according to the theory, the price will go down, all right? So the price, wow, yeah, the price didn't go down, it went up, okay? So this is another false signal, okay? Now, how to minimize, how to avoid all these, uh, these um, false signals, okay? So now we're going to add RSI, okay, Relative Strength Index, okay, and the theory for this is more or less the same, but like the opposite. Why do I say so? Because WPR has two bands, minus 20 here, minus 80, 
Uh, RSI is the opposite because the lower band, we call it uh, 30, so plus 30, and the upper band we call plus 70, okay? But the, the, the theory is more or less the same because it says when it touches the upper band, price will go down, okay? And it touches the lower band, price will go up, okay? So, ah, and, and why, why is that so? It's because, for example, when it touches the, the upper band, okay, here or, or here, like, doesn't matter, like, either Williams percent range or RSI, when it touches the upper band, it says that the price, the currency, well, not the currency, but the financial product, in this, in this case, is the currency because we are trading uh, Forex. But the financial product, in this case, will is already overbought, okay? So when it touches the upper band, it says the, the product was overbought. So from this moment, it will go down. So because it was overbought, bought, so price will go down. And following the same theory, when it touches, for example, like here, when it touches the lower band, it means the currency or the product, well, the financial product was oversold. So from here, price will become, like will raise again, okay? Okay, so let's, uh, what we are going to look for is when we're looking for now for an overlap, okay? So we're looking for an overlap of this and this and see when both indicators tells me that price will go down, we sell. And when both indicators say, oh, okay, price is going up again, then we buy, okay? So let's see if we can minimize, if we can avoid false signals. Okay, so this was the first false signal because it touched it here. So let's see if RSI has touched. No, right? So RSI is here, didn't touch the upper band, okay? So this, if we use both of them, both, by using both indicators, we could have avoid this false signal, okay? So up to now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? In this period we have six false signals. So this one has been avoided, okay? So, whoops. See, it doesn't, hold on, okay. Okay, let's see if I can delete it. Oops, doesn't work. No, no, no. Okay. So. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this one could have been avoided. How about this one? This one, again, it's touching here, okay? But here is not touching, well, not touching yet, <laughs> okay? So this could be avoided. Okay, and here, okay, so here is when it touches here, then I took a look at here, this one, is it still touching, so is it still trading a ball? So here is when I would have sold, okay? So if I sold here, okay, I would have made money, why? Because the price, as a matter of fact, okay, if I saw that here, here, I would have made money because it went down all the way here. It, it retraced, okay, retraced a little bit, but didn't break my my price here, okay? So it didn't, it didn't go above this price, okay? So it, it did a small retracement and went down again, did another retracement here, okay, and went down again. So if I continued this, if I have sold here and continued all the way to, let's say, all the way to here, I would have made this much, okay? This much money. Well, if I have continued, okay? So this would be a very good uh, example of combining these two indicators and making, placing the right uh, trade. Okay, now let's take another look. Here, there was another false signal, okay? So it touched the lower band here, but let's take a look at RSI. 
or RSI doesn't touch. So we would have been able to avoid this false signal as well. Okay, so this one, we would have been able to avoid it. So let's erase it. Okay, then next one, this one. It touches the lower band here and look at the RSI, didn't touch. Okay, so here we should have been able to avoid it. So let's delete it. Okay, here another example. It touches the lower band, RSI doesn't touch. So we wouldn't be we wouldn't be placing this freight, so we would be able to avoid it. Okay. And this is the last one in this period. Let's take a look. So here it touches the upper band and says from here price will go down. Okay. But this was also false signal because price went up, went against us. And then here it doesn't go. So we would be able to avoid this as well. All right. So this is an example that we can use these two indicators to avoid false signals. I know that a lot of you guys will maybe ask me about this one because this one went against, but then it bounced back and went all the way down. So a lot of people may argue against me, say, oh, this is not really a false signal, which I agree. In this case, I agree because, but then, it all depends, of course, it depends on your stop loss, right? So where did you set your stop loss? If you have set your stop loss here, okay? Let's say you, you set it, your stop loss here. Then this would be a false signal because it has, in fact, reached your stop loss. But if you set your stop loss like here, then it, this wouldn't be a false signal, okay? So it all depends on where you set your stop loss. But the video today was about how to combine these two indicators so that you can avoid false signals. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.